first of all, uh, thank you all for uh, attending this live webinar. As you can see, uh, our topic today uh, is Fusion Sphere uh, Virtualization Solution. Uh, this session is presented by Kashif Ali. Uh, I'm very glad uh, to have him as a webinar host. He is also, uh, he is already an elite user in the Power Enterprise Support community. He is an MVE, an HCA expert. So I'm really happy to have you as a webinar host as well. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, as I said before, you can use the chat box to write your questions. Um, and uh, I will not uh, interrupt. I will just uh, uh, present the, the activity later on after the presentation, okay? So you can uh, take over now. Okay, thank you, Elena, and uh, welcome you uh, all guys. Uh, uh, let me start my presentation. Okay, this is just a little introduction about me. I'm working as a solution architect and uh, I'm heading the solution department in Pegasus, Pakistan. And uh, I have more than 17 years of experience on different technologies. So my responsibilities are to design and uh, uh, to design the complex solutions and turnkey solutions. Uh, I'm also VMware, Oracle, and Veda certified and uh, Huawei certified as well. So I have currently two SCIE uh, certification, which is cloud and storage. <clears throat> okay, uh, this webinar is about, uh, uh, my, uh, my goal is to to achieve uh, HCIE certification for you guys. So I will be arranging some uh, chains of uh, webinars uh, which will which will include all the components of HCI cloud uh, uh, certification. So this is the first step. So today our topic is uh, introduction to Huawei Fusion Sphere and uh, Fusion Sphere Serverization Architecture and its features. So hopefully in future future uh, I will be managing some uh, more webinars. So uh, we'll be arranging uh, chains of webinars to cover all the topics so that you guys can uh, have uh, uh, HCA certification information. And we will we'll be trying to uh, arrange some web webinars on the exam as well. So actually the goal is to achieve HCA cloud for you guys. Uh, in this webinar, we will be, uh, uh, I'll be introducing, uh, uh, I'll be doing some introduction to Fusion Sphere, and uh, we have some lab as well. Uh, we have uh, we don't have the full lab available, but uh, we will go through the web GUI and uh, its features, and we can create VM and we can do some virtual switching creation, and we, we will play 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 around with the uh, web GUI, and I will let you know how how we can set up a, a lab for yourself, so you can play around with this. Uh, and we have some live question and answer as well. I will try my best to answer your queries. And at the end of the session, uh, Elena will be posting some question uh, in the community post. So you guys are welcome to answer these questions as well. Uh, so uh, today, our today's topic is uh, server virtualization or fusion server virtualization. As we, we know for the server virtualization, we need server storage and network. These are the mandatory requirements uh, of uh, infrastructure. On top of this infrastructure, we need our virtualization software. So we can use VMware, KVM, or any uh, virtualization software. So however, it's providing Fusion Compute uh, Virtualization, which is uh, consists of VRM and CNS. So uh, I think uh, it is better. I, I will compare it with VMware as uh, uh, we we know that uh, everybody is uh, very familiar with the VMware. So I will try my best to compare it with VMware so you, you guys can understand the components very easily. So for the for, for time being, you can, you can say that CNA is like uh, ESXi. So CNA is the hypervisor. You, you have to install the CNA uh, software on the server level. If you have multiple gates or multiple servers, so CNA will be installed on the server. And VRM is like, uh, uh, management software. So you can say like vCenter. So uh, VRM will be managing the CNAs and uh, uh, all the cluster uh, cluster operations, all the things will be managed uh, using VRM. VRM uh, will, will actually provide a web GUI, web GUI to uh, manage
life, all the things. Okay, and uh, there's uh, more tools available as well. Uh, for example, eBackup. So Huawei is providing backup software as well. Uh, if you want to back up the VMs, so eBackup is the software to back up your VMs. As we all know that uh, uh, for, for VM backup, the technology is different. So eBackup is provided for uh, uh, backups of the VMs. Ultra VIA is used for the, uh, for example, you have uh, a PR site in VIA site and you want to re replicate and you, or you want uh, uh, you want a DS site for these VMs. So Ultra VIA will help you to create a DS site for your uh, PR site. So all VMs will be repl replicated and you can do VR drills and all the stuff uh, using Ultra VIA too. <clears throat> Okay, uh, let's see the what is available in uh, compute uh, utilization, uh, computer utilization management. In compute, we have uh, uh, VM lifecycle management. Uh, as we know, uh, we can create VMs, we can stop, we can start, uh, we can do snapshots, backup restoration, disk migration. So all all these features are available in VM lifecycle management. So we can do all these tasks and. Uh, for the virtual resource management, we have a logical grouping of the VM folder. We can uh, create users, we can assign rights to the users, and we can create some host groups. We can do template management. So all these features are mandatory for any utilization uh, platform. Uh, as we know, VMware is also providing all these features. And same is for the uh, virtual resource configuration management. So we have online, offline, uh, memory, CPU, uh, scaling and we can add an AC or any peripheral devices and we have GPU pass through and SI IOV configuration as well and uh, mem memory over commitment, QS, uh, CPU uh, uh, over commitment, commitment, all these features are available. So uh, if you compare with, it, with VMware, so the major functions are supported by Huawei as well. These all features are also available in VMware and same features are available with the Huawei. So we can do all these things with uh, Huawei utilization. Okay, uh, if we have a uh, 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 different clusters running. Uh, we have two clusters and multiple CNAs are running, multiple VMs are running. So uh, there are some limitations. For example, uh, it support 128 physical servers. So when the new versions are coming, so hopefully the, these will be uh, improving more and uh, we can support 8,000 8, VMs in uh, uh, different scenarios. So uh, we can also use VIM uh, as a active and standby uh, configuration. For example, if you have uh, one VRM and the, the uh, VRM is uh, hosted on a physical node and the physical node goes down, so uh, it will be moved to the other node, but we, we, can, we can have, we can have uh, two VRM as well in cluster mode. So both, both VRM will be synced together and if, if one VRM has some issues, the uh, second VRM will uh, take over and we can manage it from the second VRM. So these clusters are very scalable and more. Than, I think it is more than enough to have 128 physical server and 8,000 VMs. So it is very flexi flexible and scalable. Uh, GPU virtualization and GPU pass-through. So well, we have option available for GPU virtualization and GPU pass-through as well. If customer uh, want to do some gaming or they, they need some 3D requirements or they have some AutoCAD requirements. So there are uh, some uh, physical, uh, there are some uh, uh, GPU cards available which are supported in CNAs. We can store in CNAs and we can create uh, GPU groups and we can assign virtual GPU or we can assign uh, uh, pass through as well. So, 3D and gaming, all the things are possible here. Uh, is there any question? No. Okay. So, uh, 3D graphics and, and all these things are supported. Uh, there's no issue if customer want to use 3D, 3D, uh, uh, they want to use 3D application or gaming, anything, we can do that. Okay. 
uh, all in CPU uh, in memory uh, uh, where uh, if you want to add some CPU and memory to the VM, it is possible and, and you don't need to restart the VM. Uh, offline is obviously possible. Uh, we can do offline as well, but uh, if your VM is in production and you want to add some memory and CPU, so it is possible. You, go, you can hot add memory and CPU. See, you, you just add the memory and CPU, uh, the uh, VM will be using uh, more CPU and memory. So no, no need to restart. So it is very flexible. Very easily we can add this uh, to, to the, to the Yes, yeah, so Akash, we can do that. There is a question from Akash: Can we can we add a GPU to a single? Or yes, it's, it's possible. You can use uh, using pass through. You can do that. Okay. How the uh, how memory over commitment uh, works? We have three uh, technologies available in Huawei. One is uh, sharing the memory. So for example, uh, as we can see the blue uh, VM1, VM2, and VM3, they are using the same block uh, from the physical server. But this block will be used for read only, read only. You cannot write on this block. And for example, if any of VM require uh, writing, uh, the, the VM2, for example, want to write in the memory, so another block will be assigned and copy on write will be executed. So, uh, and another uh, block will be uh, assigned to this VM and will be mapped to that VM. So this is one technology and memory strapping. Uh, if the memory is idle for, for, for a long time, so the memory will be strapped to the file and to the disk. And if it is required, it will be strapped out uh, to the memory again. So this is a second technology and memory ballooning. For example, a VM have, uh, uh, this VM have uh, ideal memory and this VM needs uh, more memory. So this VM can use this ideal, uh, idle, idle memory to use it. So these, these three technology, uh, technologies are used for memory over commitment and this will improve the usage of memory and it will obviously reduce the cost as well. Any question? Yeah, memory ballooning is, uh, uh, for example, if you have a VM which uh, which memory is not used, so the second VM can use the memory of the first VM. So this is called memory ballooning, and uh, it will be automatically managed, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, in VMHA, uh, uh, FugenSphere is supporting VMHA as well. For example, you have four uh, four server. One is uh, reserved for the for the failure, uh, if for example this, for example this machine fails, so all the VM will be restarted to the reserve machine, and it will be done automatically uh, if you have configured HA properly. So there are a lot of uh, policies and configuration available in the Fusion Suite configuration, so you can do uh, different configuration for uh, uh, VMs HA. So it depends on the scenario and requirements. You can change it. Uh, as per your requirement, but, but by default, it will be restarted to next available machine. Uh, who is asking about the live migration? Yes, live migration is supported. So you can migrate your machine uh, lively without any downtime. You can, uh, if the, if the uh, server is, is failed physically, so it will be restarted. So there, there will be a small downtime. But if you want to migrate, if you if you have planned migration and you want to migrate it live, it is possible. You can migrate it live without downtime. DRS. Now uh, we will be looking about DRS. What what is DRS? Uh, this, uh, for example, uh, in uh, in peak hours. If you, if you want to, uh, for example, a uh, customer have four machine running and uh, all, all the workloads are on two machines only and two machines have some resources available. 
So this, this may be impact your performance. So for, for the same user experience, it is better to, to move uh, workload to uh, on the all four machines. So we, we can redistribute, DLS will automatically redistribute all the workloads to all machines. Like we can see it, all the workloads are now uh, distributed and uh, load balancing is working properly. So DRS is also available. It is same like VMware. In VMware, we have the same function. It, is, it, is, it will automatically manage uh, to move VMs and will automatically uh, do the creation. So we have a question. Is the latest region shared with realization based on KVM or Zen? It is based on KVM. The old one was on the Zen, but the latest is on the KVM. Uh, we have another option, DBM. Uh, Sometimes customer requires if uh, they have 100 of servers running in the uh, data center. So they have a peak time and non-peak times. So in peak time, all the server will be uh, serving to the customer and all workloads are, will be distributed amongst all the servers. Uh, but if there's a non-peak time, for example, at night till the morning, uh, there's, there's no peak and customer only need two servers. For example, in this example, we have four servers and customer only need two servers to, uh, to provide service to, to, to the client. So DPM will automatically move workloads to available uh, host uh, in which resources are available and it will, it will uh, free up these two machines. So these two, these two, two machines will be powered off and uh, it will uh, reduce the power requirement and cooling requirement for the customer. So this is a very great feature to save some power and cooling. So in question, I think. Yuvakas is asking question uh, about DRS. Yeah, it is same like VMware. DPM and DRS is same like VMware. So there's no difference. Uh, Shweb is asking, uh, it will be powered off or standby? No, it will be uh, powered off, but uh, uh, once the peak, uh, for example, these, these machines will be powered off, but uh, in the morning, if the workload, uh, workload goes on and uh, peak hours come, comes again, so these machines will be powered power again automatically and workload will be distributed by DPM. So you don't need to worry about it. It will be done automatically. Okay, storage resolution management. Uh, in uh, Fusion Sphere, we have a uh, SAN storage option, NAS storage, Fusion storage, block storage pool as well, and local disk as well. So all these uh, four storages are supported. We can configure it and we can create data for it and we can use it for VMs. And uh, same for storage resource capabilities. Uh, we have uh, thin options, thick options, incremental snapshots, and we have migration, virtual disk scaling, and disk snapshot management as well. And management of storage configuration, uh, we have uh, we can we can have uh, virtual disk as well, and we can use RDM as well. So all these features are available. We can use these features to manage storages. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a question from Faisal. How uh, has a vSAN? Yes, or Fusion Storage. You can use Fusion Storage as a software defined storage. We can use that. For, for example, uh, in this slide, it is uh, Fusion Storage block storage pool. Fusion Storage is a, a software based, software defined storage like vSAN in uh, VMware. Okay. Uh, a storage also support thin provisioning. You can assign, uh, for example, you have 100 GB of disk and you want to assign 120 virtual disk, so it is possible. But uh, it is not recommended to do that. It is not uh, good for, it will not give you the performance, but it is uh, required for, if you want to do some testing or some uh, test and dev environment, so it is possible. It will, it will reduce IOPS and performance as well, but you can do the, uh, this virtualization as well, thin provisioning. So it will, for example, you have 100 GB of this and you want to assign virtually 120 GB this, so it is possible. 
but you will get the alerts as well if if you are exceeding the uh, uh, space so you will get the alerts and you can you can you can change configuration according to your requirements yes it's support uh, you have question does it support live migration uh, can you please uh, Yes, we will. Uh, I will share this PPD. You know, if you, if it is allowed. Okay, uh, we have option to uh, expand our disk online. So, if uh, you have assigned this to a virtual machine and you, and you want to expand the disk capacity, so it is possible without restarting the VM. But it depends on the operating system. Uh, if you expand the disk, so uh, obviously operating system must know that the disk size is uh, now increased and uh, the file system, all these things to be better out. So um, in, in Windows, I think it is very easy. You can right click and expand, so it will be automatically expanded. But in, in Linux, maybe if you are using any volume manager or something like that, so you have to do some uh, commands to increase the disk capacity. So it is possible from the future uh, sphere, we can do online expansion. It is possible, no issue. <clears throat> okay, uh, as we discussed, uh, we can uh, create a data store and on top of data, that data store, we can create uh, virtual disk. But if customer requirement is uh, raw disk, so raw disk mapping is also possible. In case of uh, uh, very common use cases, uh, Oracle uh, Rack, for Oracle RAC, sometimes you need to map uh, physical LUN to, uh, to directly to the VM for high performance and all the things. So Oracle RAC will do the uh, disk management or ASM is involved and all the things are managed by ASM and Oracle. So if an application or database required uh, uh, direct mapping from the LUN to the VM, it is possible, we can do that. So the question I think. <clears throat> okay, uh, we will share the PPT, there will be no issues. We have snapshot. In, in every virtualization uh, solution, snapshot is very mandatory. And uh, uh, future sphere is also uh, supporting snapshots. Uh, snapshots are required sometimes if a customer want to do some patching or they want to do some testing on the production machine. So you can take a snapshot, and if there's uh, some issue after patching or uh, you you you're testing, you can restore your snapshot back. So, for example, uh, snapshot technology is uh, used. Uh, for example, you take a snapshot test, a snapshot will create another delta disk. Delta disk redirect will be redirected to the that delta disk and original disk will be in the read only mode. So once you delete the snapshot, it will automatically merge data to the original disk. So it is not recommended to have multiple snapshots. Sometimes it creates problems. And uh, uh, as per my experience, if you uh, taking snapshot for a long time, it creates problems. So, it is not recommended to keep it for a long time. So it's just for a temporary purpose. If you want to do some testing and all the things, you can take, take a snapshot and then uh, restore, restore it back. If you want to keep a backup, so you keep a proper backup tool. So backup, a proper backup tool can take a backup and it, uh, the backup tool, tool also take a snapshot and then copy the disk to the repository. But it is recommended to have a backup tool for proper backup. Snapshot is not a proper backup tool. It, it is just for a temporary purpose. So we, we uh, Fusion Sphere is uh, providing snapshot technology with memory and without memory as well. <coughs> uh, we have a question, can, can we migrate VM from a VMA environment to future computer environment? Uh, it is in my slide, we can, we can uh, Migrate uh, VM to Fusion Sphere. Uh, I will show it to you. Okay, what about the license requirement for future? 
there are uh, there are multiple uh, type of licensing so uh, you can check it from the our website uh, different license types and different features are available depend, de dependent on your, on your requirement Uh, what are the maximum quantity supported by game? Already discussed uh, to 128. Uh, okay. On license requirement, we can have another session as well because it's a pre sales uh, question, so we can do that as well. Uh, this session is dedicated to, to post sales, so let's see. Yeah, uh, there, there's a question. We cannot decrease the size of the disk. We can only increase it. Okay. So, okay. Uh, FutureSphere is using a VIMS, Virtual Image Management System. It's a cluster file system, as we know, for clustering of the VM, we need a file system which which should be accessible to all the hosts. So FusionSphere is providing VMS cluster file system, which is very flexible and uh, dynamically scalable, and uh, we can use it for the uh, data store creation and all things. So all all the machine can have access to to, to the VMS. Uh, it it could be FCSAN, IPSAN, or uh, any shared disk, we can use it. Uh, uh, we can we can use this file system for the share share uh, storages. In network virtualization, we have uh, uh, virtual switches, virtual NICs, port group uplink, and VLAN. This is very important if you want to. Uh, if you once you create a VM, you need to know about the virtual switch, virtual NIC, port group uplink, and VLAN. Virtual switch is, for example, you have a uh, uh, machine available with uh, two NAC card installed in it, and th these two cards are connected to the physical switch. But once uh, once you install a hypervisor or a virtualization platform, you need to create a virtual switch. And to, uh, in virtual switch, you have to add uplink. Uplinks are these two cards. Uh, you you have to add uh, these cards to the virtual switch, so so the virtual switch can communicate uh, out to the external network. And virtual NACs are connected to virtual switch and uh, are connected to uh, VM. So VM will be communicating using virtual NIC. Port groups are defined on top of virtual switch. So port groups are mapped to the virtual NIC and uh, port groups will communicate uh, to virtual NIC and uh, uh, virtual NIC will communicate to the VM and uh, port groups are communicating through the virtual switch towards the external network and then uh, all the internal network. And VLANs are also supported, so we can assign VLAN to port groups. You can assign, you can create access port, or you can create trunk port, or you can assign a single VLAN to a virtual port, or you can assign multiple uh, uh, VLANs to a port group. Okay. So, in a Virtual network uh, capabilities, we have these options available. These all options are supported once you create a virtual switch. So we can do all these configuration. So we can do traffic shaping, IP, uh, MAC binding, TCP isolation, all these features are available. So uh, you can see in, do in the documentation and uh, when, when you create a virtual switch, so there's a help button, you can uh, click on that, that help button. So it will show you what, what feature will do uh, what what requirements? So these are these are also available. Uh, IPv6 is already supported. This is a complete diagram of the network. So we have uh, two plans. One is service plane, and the other is management plane. Management is used for the management of the VRM and the plant SSH installation tool, SMTP, FTP. All the things are managed through this. And the service plan is for, uh, to to connect VMs to the external network. So IPv4 and 6 both are supported. So it's a complete diagram. You can see that all the things are, are connected together. Okay, how uh, distributed switches, how distributed switch works. So as uh, we discussed earlier in the previous slide, that uh, for example, you have server A, you have two, NIC, NIC 1, NIC 2, 
answer will be NIC1 and NIC2. One DVS is uh, app and one DVS is web. So web, web and app are on different networks, two different networks. For example, this NIC is connected to DVS2 and this NIC is connected to DVS2. These are for redundancy purpose. So for example, one NIC goes down so the other uh, NIC can work. So uh, we can add more cards as well. We can do link aggregation and uh, nick teaming as well. So it is possible. So for example, the Linux machines, a red one, are connected to DVS1. Uh, these are connected to this physical network and the uh, DVS2 uh, is app layer. So app layer is connected to with these physical networks. So you can isolate uh, physical, uh, you can uh, uh, create DVS to isolate uh, physical network as well and uh, virtual network as well. So these are all possible. Okay, we have fusion care as well. Uh, if you want to uh, do some health check and report, so fusion care can, uh, can help you to to get some reports and some help. But if you don't have future care available, you can uh, use always uh, Fusion Square. It's on GUI, there, there are some alerts and uh, health and performance things available. So we can do that with the Fusion Sphere uh, GUI as well. Okay, so let me check some questions. What is eBackup? eBackup is a backup software. Okay, there are some storage based question, but we will uh, cover in, uh, I think if we have a chance to, uh, to manage, uh, I will try my best to arrange some storage level uh, webinar as well. So we, we, we will covering smart, smart, smart migration, smart utilization. We will cover that in, in store, storage uh, webinars. It is related to storage. Okay, Huawei is also providing uh, up, upgrade tools, so you don't don't need to worry about the upgrades. A tool will a tool will automatically suggest you how, what is required, what is uh, what what are the deployment steps, and it will automatically upgrade all the things. So you don't need to worry about it. As we can see, that all the things are managed automatically. It will check uh, it will check uh, your existing environment and will suggest uh, and also will upgrade as well. So. The, uh, the upgrade tools are very powerful, so you don't need to worry about upgrades. <clears throat> okay, yes. someone was asking about the eBackup software, so let's uh, see what is eBackup. eBackup is a backup tool uh, provided by uh, Huawei, so you can configure eBackup with the Fusion Sphere. Uh, uh, you can add your environment in the e backup and it will automatically discover your VMs and it can can be integrated with the storage. So it it can uh, it uh, it will it can take a snapshot from the storage as well and you can uh, uh, copy VM. What is the technology used uh, in backups? All the backup software are using the same technology for the virtualized environment. So for example, VM and uh, Net Backup or e backup. These all are connected to the uh, vCenter or VRM. So once you uh, run a policy for, for a backup, it will send commands to VRM or vCenter to take a snapshot of the, that VM. It will take a snapshot of that VM and once uh, uh, the delta disk is created, so all read write will be redirected to the delta disk and the original disk will be in the read only mode. So we can copy that uh, read only disk mode to the repository. So all the backup software are doing the same thing. So there is no rocket sense, all the backup software are doing the same thing. And once the backup is completed, snapshot will be automatically deleted and it will be revert back to the original disk. So uh, this is the procedure how the e-backup works. But uh, uh, in next uh, uh, webinars, I will try my best to uh, show the e-backup complete architecture and what are the scenari scenarios and what type of backups we can do with the e-backup. So this is a just an overview of the e-backup and, and hopefully in uh, next session we'll be doing some, some good uh, webinars on the e-backup and uh, storage level uh, features.
So Huawei is providing a DS solution as well. For example, if you have a PS site and a DS site, so you can configure Ultra VR. Ultra VR will be responsible to replicate your VMs from DS uh, from PS site to DS, and it is a very powerful tool. Uh, uh, hopefully, in future we'll be uh, doing some demos as well in in HCIE storage webinars. But uh, you can do some VR drills, and it's just a one click. You just click. Uh, do a plan migration or do a DR drills. Everything is very uh, simple and just with one click you can do that. So Huawei is providing ultra VR for uh, managing the DR site. Let me see some questions. I'm having a lot of questions. Uh, Fusion Compute have uh, two two things. One is VRM and, and CNS. It is called Fusion Compute. Uh, any other question? Okay. <clears throat> okay, someone, someone was asking about the migration. So migration is possible. Uh, for example, customer have uh, existing environment. Uh, they are running Apple V, KVM, Zen or VMware. And uh, now we have deployed uh, our, our solution. So we can migrate using Rambo migration service. Uh, we have a Rambo server and we can install agent on the source server and the target, uh, target server. So data will be replicated from the source volume to the target volume. So we can do the migration using Rambo server, it is possible. And, uh, but you have to check the operating system, uh, supported operating system and environment. So it's, uh, you have to plan and design accordingly, and you have to study the customer existing environment, what they are using and what version they are using. So it is possible that we can migrate data from uh, VMware, Hyper-V, KVM, Zen, or to, to our Fusion Strain, it is possible. So this tool can be used. Okay, in lab we have, uh, uh, I have only one machine, uh, I have uh, only one CNA, and on top of that, I have installed the VRM. So uh, let's see how, how it looked like. I think I have to reshare. Let me share the application. Uh, share my screen. Where is it? Let me share my computer screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see. Okay. So this is the interface of Fusion Compute. You have to log it. This is the main interface. Okay, uh, uh, let me uh, show you the packages, how you can install it. Install it. Okay, for CNA and Fusion, for Fusion Compute installation, you need uh, these packages. Uh, you need a, a CNA ISO. ISO. You have to install it on the physical server, uh, Fusion Computer Installer, and uh, this is Fusion Compute VRM. These the, these three will be required. So I would suggest to use Fusion Compute Installer. Uh, it will automatically install both of them. So you you can use this Fusion uh, Fusion Compute Installer. For example, I have already installed installed it, but I want to show it show it to you that how you can install it. It's just an interface. You had to install this uh, software on your laptop or any desktop machine and you can keep the data in the, that machine and you have to connect your laptop to the same network where the CNA, uh, the physical server is uh, connected. So you can, you, can, uh, you can install both of them from this tool, using this tool. It is very easy installation. So I have did this, it is very easy, you can do that. For example, I click next. So it will ask about the typical configuration or customer con configuration, and it will ask about the packages. So you have to show the packages, and it, it will verify the packages, and then it will start installation. So it will ask about the IP addresses, all the things, configuration, so you have to provide it. And uh, once installation is completed, so you will see, you will see this interface. This is the interface of Fusion Compute. So in Fusion, <coughs> Fusion Compute, we have uh, 
So let me show you the link. Uh, these packages can be downloaded from uh, uh, our website. I will share the link uh, in the course. I'll, I'll, I'll share, share the link which is available. These are available if you have login of Huawei, uh, if you have a login so you can download it. I'm not, I'm not sure if you are not a partner so you can download it or not, but uh, as I'm a partner, so I'm able to download this. I will share the link. Okay, once you are logging, so in resource pool, you, we have a cluster, uh, management cluster. In management cluster, I have one CNA, and one CNA, I have VRM installed. This VRM is running and uh, I'm accessing this VRM through the browser interface. And uh, we have uh, VM templates option is available. If you want to create a template from this Windows 10, so it is available. We can create folders. We have storages, network, security groups. Security groups are used for the, if you want to assign security group a VM. So you can uh, restrict uh, VM communication for the certain ports or certain IP addresses, so it is possible. And GPU groups are also available. In monitoring, we have uh, alarms, event, and performance in system. Uh, we have tasks, logs, user management. We can create some user and we can assign uh, different uh, uh, roles to different users if it's possible. Okay, what are the main things you need to create a VM? Some question, I think. Yeah, for, for practice, you can use one server, uh, one server only. It's not a big issue. Uh, I think. So uh, to create a VM, uh, first you need to create uh, a data store. So how we can create a data store? The storage, when, when you click on storage, so it will show you the local storage as well. And I have FC card installed in this machine and uh, storage is connected to the FC cards. So I have created a share storage as well, which is uh, 300 GB. If, if, if I want to add another data store, so it will, so I have another 200 uh, GB available, so I can create uh, another data store as well. For example, I create this data store. So you can give any name test to for example so we don't need raw map devices so, uh, you have to uh, associate to the cna i want to associate this data store with this cna i have only one it will format and it will create a file system on top of this uh, data store you can see, uh, we can check this uh, the status of in the task. When you click on the task, it will show you this task is in progress, a data store association. All the tasks are mentioned here. So you can see all the tasks here. Okay, so once the data store is created, you need a network as well. So by default, when, once you install uh, the uh, VRN, the management DVS is by default created. Is we are using this IP, so we are use uh, we are accessing this machine using this uh, DVS. In, in this DVS, we have a pod group. This port is uh, the port. The port is access VLAN is zero, so it means uh, VLAN is not tagged, so it's untagged traffic. If you want to create another DVS, so you can create another DVS as well, but you have to. Yes, some questions. Okay, so for example, if you want to uh, create another uh, uh, DVS, you can, we can create that. You have to add a link. You have to add, for example, you want to uh, add tool, you don't need to, uh, for this uh, uh, tool features. So the uh, DVS, uh, it will ask for the network card, which physical network card you want to add to, to this DVS. For 
for example, I want to add uh, this one. Uh, by the way, you can uh, you can also uh, uh, aggregate two network cards. So you can uh, uh, join two network cards and then assign it to the DVS. So it will be redundant. You can do link aggregation and link teaming as well. If you want to uh, assign uh, a VLAN pool, so you can assign here, for example, R, R60 to 70. So this this uh, switch can access only 70 to 60 VLAN. So uh, if you allow VLANs uh, from the backend, but it is not allowed from here, so you cannot access that VLAN. So uh, DVS is created. For example, test three is created. Now you have to add a port group. Let me add a port group. So we have two options. One is access, other is trunk. If, for example, uh, your VM is accessing multiple VLANs. So you have to create a trunk port group for that VM. If your VM is only accessing one VLAN, so we can uh, create an access port group. So uh, let me try to, I'm adding access port. And we, uh, VLAN, we have to, you have to specify VLAN. For example, I want to specify 60 only. So this 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 port group will have access to 60 VLAN only. If you want to uh, uh, use trunk, so in trunk you can uh, assign 60 to 60 to 70 or something like that. So it will be access, uh, accessible through the trunk port. So port group is created. Okay, for uh, for OS installation, you need uh, media. If you want to install operating system, you need a uh, uh, image, ISO image. So ISO image, or you you can upload it to the data store, or you can map it from your uh, uh, client. So I have already uploaded uh, a media, I think, in this storage. If you if you click on the data share data storage, and you can you click on the file. Here, uh, the file is here. You can see that Windows Media is already uploaded. You can upload file from here. Just click on upload and upload the data. You can drag it here and it will start. You can click start and it will be uploaded automatically. So it's not a big issue. Okay, so uh, let me try to install uh, operating system on, let me create a VM. Just, uh, click on the CNA. Click on the create VM. It's very easy. So if you, if you are familiar with the VMware, so it's the same thing we are doing. Windows 2. See, uh, we have only one CNA. We are installing Windows 10. So I have to select Windows. The remote machine, so I'm getting slow response. Uh, Windows 10, for example, I select Windows 10 Professional 64 bit. Okay, uh, it will ask about the data store. Which data store do you want to use? We have three data store. I can use this test one that I already created. Next. Okay, it will ask about the CPU, memory, and this. For example, uh, uh, I'll go with the default, but I will increase the disk size. Okay, okay. here you can uh, select the port groups. You can select the DVS as well. For this VM, which, which network you want to select. So I will go with management DVS, and we, we can change it if, as per your requirement. And you can add another uh, card as well, add device. And you can add another card and you can connect to the second DVS. So it is possible, no issue. Okay, we will be created. Okay, now we have to, uh, now we have to map uh, the 
uh, ISO image for installation. So we have to go to configuration. At the bottom, you will see the CD-ROM or DVD. Okay, we have to stop it first. We will start. Okay. Started now. So for example, I want to mount uh, the, CD, uh, the uh, ISO image. We have to browse. ISO images in the shared uh, data store. I can select it and press OK. And you can view in the task if it is already mounted or not. It's successfully mounted. Now we have to restart this machine. Let me restart this. We have to restart this. We will boot it from. Machine is restarted. To access the uh, uh, VNC console, you have to click on this login using VNC. You can see, so machine is booting. So I'll be not going through the installation. So it is uh, like the same Windows installation. So you can install the Windows from here. So it will be booting and it will be asking the questions and you can install it. Okay, I already have installation of Windows 10, so I will show it to you. You can see, yeah, already installed. So this this is my Windows machine already installed. <coughs> okay, so and we have some more features available. You can migrate this machine. But uh, as I have only one machine, so I cannot migrate. You, I can migrate the data store only. I can change the host as uh, I have only one machine available. If you have two machines, so you can do the testing as well. So it is, uh, if you have two machines, it is recommended to use two machines. So you can use uh, Active Standby VRM as well, and you can migrate system from one system to the other system. But uh, is right now I have, I have only one machine, so I can't do the migration. So these are all available here. In the cluster management, uh, we can we can have uh, options available. Uh, if you want to enable any option, memory overcommitment, uh, VM start policy, uh, adjustment of VM pneumatic topology, HA configuration. So we we can have multiple configuration available for the cluster. We can do that. But uh, right now we don't have the second machine, so we can't do that. All the configurations are available here in the cluster control. So we can, you can control it from here. Uh, if you have any questions, so if you go to ISO to ISO, yeah, so similar as we can see that uh, uh, configuration are all there. Uh, it's it's the same like ASXI. All the features are the same, but maybe we may have more features and more. Uh, but uh, the major features are the same. Uh, we will be doing, there are some questions about the OpenStack and the cloud integration. So we will be doing some webinar uh, on the uh, OpenStack version as well. So uh, we'll be doing that. This, this uh, actually this uh, webinar is a basic introduction of the uh, Fusion Sphere technology and Fusion Compute. Uh, later on, we'll be doing some advanced level uh, webinar as well. So this is just a start. So uh, stay tuned with us. We'll be doing some more uh, and more webinars uh, so it will help you. It will help you to to do HCI, HCI cloud in future. So my aim is for you guys to achieve uh, achieve HCI cloud certification. So I'll be doing a, a series of webinar and I will be showing all the things. If you have any question, you can ask me uh, in community. So I'm the community member. You can send me private message or you can uh, send me. Uh, you can post on the community. I will try to answer it. Uh, or maybe you can send me a private message, I'll answer, no issues. So this was just a, a little demo. So if you have any question, you can ask. So that's it from my side. Uh, yeah.
Thank you, thank you. If you have any question, you can uh, send me a message and a private message, or you can post post on the uh, community. So I will try my best to answer. So hopefully, uh, this session will help you to understand the fusion sphere, and in future we'll be doing some more webinars, and it will help you to towards HCIE cloud. And uh, I'll be doing some uh, webinars at the end for the. Uh, written exam, lab exam, and uh, interview. So I'll be covering all the aspects for the uh, certification and I'll be doing some webinar on the storage as well. So Alina, that, that's it from my side. If any question, I'll answer. And uh, Yes, I was just uh, sharing your profile link in the community for anyone who wants to follow you, see what you are posting, also if they have any question. Uh, and also, I encourage all of you to use the ask for help uh, function in the community to share your to share your questions. Our moderators and experts are there to help you and answer all your questions. I noticed that there were many questions uh, for today, so I decided to compile uh, all of them or most of them, and uh, we will create a Q and A post with uh, these questions and the answers because uh, there's a lot of interest. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of topic. questions, so we can do that. Yeah, a lot of questions and uh, we should definitely have another, at least one more session uh, when you uh, are available to do it. I'm sure that uh, there's a lot more to share uh, in a future session. Uh, yeah, this, is, this was just a starting, so we'll be doing more sessions yeah. in the uh, deep dive. So. Great. Uh, anyway, um, I have uh, I have noticed all the questions. I will prepare with my colleagues from the technical team a Q and A post, and we will share it in the community as well, just to make sure that uh, all the all the answers uh, were covered. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, for the future sessions, you will see more information in the in the community. Um, in case you are not able to always follow. Uh, the community. Um, I will share the subscribe link. You can subscribe uh, to the webinars and all, um, only the category you are interested in. Uh, so you'll receive an email notification every time there's a new webinar for that particular category. We have network, IT, cloud communication, wireless and digital power. So based on your interest, you can uh, subscribe to a certain uh, category. Uh, and uh, now we'll uh, have the two activities. The first one is uh, extremely easy. As I said, is uh, this activity is just for those of you attending the live webinar. Um, basically, uh, the mechanism is really simple. Starting now, you have 10 minutes to share this question. I, uh, I shared it in the chat box. You can just copy paste it and share this uh, comment uh, under the activity post. So all you need to do is uh, share a comment with, I attended this webinar under the webinar post in the next 10 minutes. Uh, this is the post. You just have to leave a comment uh, under this post. Uh, I would also appreciate if you confirm here after you share the comment, just let me know that you shared uh, the comment. Uh, the comment I shared in the, in the chat box, I attended this uh, webinar. Let me copy paste it again to make it easy for you to copy paste it as well. Okay, this is the comment. Just let us know that you attended this webinar. This is all you have to do. But not, uh, I, I want you to leave the comment in the, in the community and then you, you can just confirm here that uh, you share the comment in the community. Yes, only once. Just go to the link and yeah. Uh, leave a so comment. go here to the link and leave a comment under this post, okay? And leave a comment with I attended this webinar. Okay, you still have about ten more minutes to share your comment there, um, and uh, while. Okay, uh, 
but please leave a comment in the community as well. I shared the link multiple times. You need to leave a comment there, okay? Yeah, you can just leave it once. Uh, okay, so before we go to the three questions, uh, can you go, go please to the slide with the community overview? Yeah, that one. Uh, I just want to let everyone know, I know that many of you are, are already familiar with the community. Maybe we also have some new participants in this webinar. Um, I just want you to know that uh, we, the whole Enterprise Support Community, are uh, hosting these webinars. They are free. You don't have to uh, pay to watch uh, experts um, like Ashif, which is, I think, great. We make learning uh, accessible to anyone. Uh, we encourage you to subscribe to uh, our content, to follow our community because um, every month we have new webinars, new activities, um, and you have uh, a lot of useful technical knowledge that you can learn from. And also you can use the Ask for Help option to receive help from our experts in under 24 hours. We have already a very big community. We are hoping to uh, have an even, even bigger community um, and uh, also we have created a public recognition system. We have an elite users program where the most active uh, members of our community have uh, special roles like uh, this one today, a uh, webinar host. Um, as I said, Kashif also has other elite user uh, roles. He's an MVE and also um, an ACA expert. Uh, so if you want to share your knowledge, uh, if you want to share technical content, uh, you are welcome to join the Elite Users program as well. And uh, we have a, a reward system based on high coins, which you can gain by uh, taking different actions in this community and also by participating in the uh, activities we have. And uh, we have rewards in the online shop uh, that you can claim for a certain number of high coins and also rewards for every activity like this activity today where we offer 10 uh, Amazon gift cards. So I highly encourage uh, everyone, if you're not already a member of this community, to join us. Uh, there is a lot to learn in this community. You can also meet your peers. Uh, you can meet uh, experts from all around the world and also uh, get rewards. Uh, so I think there are uh, many benefits for all the all the members of our community. Um, I would also like to uh, let Kashif present the three questions before we close this session. Uh, as I said, there are two different activities. One is for those of you attending the live webinar and another one uh, is the classic activity where we share three questions in the uh, under the uh, activity post, and you are all invited to answer the three questions in the next days. So it doesn't have to be necessarily today, but you can uh, answer them uh, in the next days. Uh, so Kashif, can you please uh, show the three questions before we close uh, today's session? Okay, this is the first question, a true or false uh, type of question. Uh, of course, I will also update the questions uh, in the post, so don't worry about it. This is just a preview for you. You will be able to find the questions uh, in the in the in the community as well, so don't worry about it. I am updating the post as we speak. I am updating and adding the questions there. So whenever you have time, you can. Uh, can start uh, answering the questions. Okay, they have been updated. You'll be able to find them uh, in the post, okay? Uh, please don't answer here because you need to answer them uh, in the community. You need to leave a comment here. Please check the chat. I left the, the, the link. You need to go here to this link and answer the questions there, okay? The questions, uh, yes, you can uh, you can answer later. You just need to go to that uh, post uh, I shared and you need to leave a comment uh, below the post. And you can write uh, 
the number of the question and the, the respective answer for each uh, question. Okay, so as you can see, there are three questions. You can uh, go to the community and uh, answer them when you have time. We will, uh, we will announce the winners next week, probably in about a week. Uh, and the winners will be notified through an update of the post and also through private messages. Uh, so before we end today's session, I really want to thank all of you. I'm really happy that uh, you participated and that you had many questions. This means to me that um, you are interested in this topic. And this is uh, great feedback because now we know uh, that we should prepare more content, uh, uh, more similar content. And uh, as I always say, if you have any uh, topic suggestions, if you are interested in any particular topics, you are uh, welcome to let us know and we will do our best to find uh, experts who are able to present that particular uh, topic. So thank you for all your questions. Thank you for your time. And thank you, especially Kashi, for um, a great presentation. And uh, I wish you all a great uh, day or evening ahead. And I hope that I will see you in the next uh, live webinars we are planning as well. So this was it for today. Thank, thank, thanks, everyone. Okay, just give me a second, please. Uh, Kashif? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you all uh, for attending this session. And hopefully we'll be organizing more sessions for learning purposes. Yes, I really hope that we will have more sessions. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, see you in the community. You. Please go to the community and uh, answer the question. Thank you. Thank you.